will say this. Our friend here didn't start out this way. In order for a cell to be changed so profoundly, basically the DNA is going to have to be mutated. It's like the genetic code of that cell is going to have to be reprogrammed. And certainly there are things out there that can have, you know, those sort of effects on your cells. Um, environmental factors such as radiation, cigarette smoke, and even um, the genetic parasites that we call viruses. A virus, well, at the simplest level, it's basically a piece of genetic information, either DNA or it could be the system molecule, RNA. If he was going to be infected with a virus, one of the viruses that can affect the most profound changes in our cells is a type of virus called a retrovirus. And what's special about a retrovirus is that unlike most types of viruses, it can actually make itself part of our genetic material. There's a couple different well-known retroviruses. Um, probably the best known is HIV. There's also other types in that class, um, which are feline and murine leukemia viruses. And a lot of the viruses that are responsible for causing cancer are also retroviruses. So it looks here that the genes that the virus carried are starting to be expressed in Bowman. The fact that he's bleeding from his nose is quite interesting because a lot of viruses that have a very um, rapid course of infection through your body, things like the hemorrhagic fever viruses, one of the things they do is they basically dysregulate your body. Your body knows it's been infected with a virus. All sorts of things, all sorts of alarm bells are going off. And one of the um, consequences of that is that you basically lose the ability to maintain your blood and your body fluids in the normal compartments. So you'll see bleeding from your nose and from your eyes. And that's one of the characteristics of um, viral diseases such as Ebola. We got the blood work back. You were right. It is Marshall Bowman. Anything else? Yeah, Walter seems to think that he was dosed with some kind of designer virus. So it was intentional? Hard to say it was an accident. This stuff doesn't exist in nature. So a designer virus is basically um, you take an existing virus, and you can remove parts of that virus and replace it with genes of interest. There are lots of labs out there that are actually able to make viruses. Why would people do that? Probably the field of gene therapy best illustrates how viruses can be used for good. And gene therapy basically takes a virus and uses its um, useful traits, the fact that it can get into our bodies and deliver genetic material, and it uses those to deliver not a deadly virus, but a gene that's going to have benefit to an individual patient. Your nose is bleeding. Can we have a box of tissues, please? No. No, tissues won't help. Get me some sedatives. No. I think in the future, we'll, once the whole process is understood, once all of the genes that um, have been revealed through the, the sequencing of the human genome are, are understood, we'll start to really understand the genetic basis for, for a lot of these diseases much better than we do now. I think this episode, Transformation, actually you know, touches on quite a few really cutting edge aspects of science. So it's talking about designer viruses, bioterrorism, gene therapy, and reprogramming cells to create different types of tissues, which is stem cell therapy. So really, it's kind of got a lot going on.